yummy, 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 I've got food in my tummy. <laughs> or if you haven't eaten for a while, you haven't got food in your tummy because your body's burnt it all up. The question is, what kind of food? And I'm in the kitchen, which is a little bit uh, uh, lacking of integrity for me because I don't cook. So I can't talk to you about cooking or chefing or creating magnificent meals in the kitchen because I don't cook. But I love food. And as an exercise professional, one of the questions that people always ask me about food is how much should I, one of the questions is how much should I eat? The next question is what should I eat? What are good foods and bad foods? What are good foods and bad foods? And are there such a thing? Uh, and you will have an opinion, I'm sure. The, the whole world seems to have an opinion on good and bad foods, when to eat, what to eat, and uh, seems to, well, lots of people seem to preach at us about what we should eat, what we shouldn't eat, and as I always share, can't have, mustn't have, don't have, shouldn't have, and there's a big, long list of those. And it seems that all the things that you want to have taste delicious, are really yummy, are the things that they say can't have, mustn't have, shouldn't have, don't have. Now, here's a, my first question. Who are they? Who are the people that tell us what we should and shouldn't eat? And could it be a really good idea as an adult to choose for ourselves. I don't want anybody telling me what to eat. How about you? I don't want to have somebody else in control of what I put into my body. I want to be in control of that. Now, that's just my personal choice, my personal selection. But if you're the same and you don't want to be told what you can and can't have or what's good and bad food, what if you could figure it out for yourself? And of course you can. Uh, there's lots of courses on nutrition. There's lots of university courses on nutrition. There's lots of uh, people with degrees that have been to university that will tell you what to do about food and eating and nutrition. But how do we know that they're right? Uh, as a person who has a big long list of qualifications in nutrition and have been to many, many nutrition courses, uh, one of the things I find really fascinating is most of those courses were about telling me what to do, telling me how to eat, telling me what I could and couldn't eat and what are good and bad foods. The challenge, of course, with that is that there are so many experts in the world that they all contradict each other. So one expert will tell you that you should be a vegan vegetarian, and another expert will tell you that you should be a carnivore. And I always use that, that as an example, because they're just so far apart. Uh, you might not hear it anymore as vegan vegetarian, because sometimes it goes in and out of fashion, your particular eating plan. So now it's called plant-based diet. That's the, that's the cool one. Or carnivore, that's the cool one. And if you have a look at the differences between those two, eat only plant-based foods and or eat only animals, there's a very big difference. And you might sit somewhere in between, but how do you know what's the right thing to do? And if you are an exercise professional, should we be telling people what to do? I'm a little bit conflicted with that because I'm in the kitchen and I would never tell somebody how to cook just because I'm in the kitchen. Yes, I'm here, and yes, there's food here, and there's pots and pans and things you could cook with, but I don't know anything about cooking, and I don't like it, so I'm not going to give information about that. Could that be something to start with? If you're going to give information about food, should it be something that you understand? Understand, not regurgitate because it's somebody else's opinion. And there's so many of those. People say, drink two litres of water every day or eight glasses. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Carbohydrate makes you fat. Alcohol makes you fat. Chocolate's bad for you. Fructose in fruit will make you fat. There's all these things that people say. There's lots of saying. There's also an interesting disconnection, it seems, between saying and doing. Have you noticed? A lot of people say what you should do, but they, just by the look of them, uh, it might suggest evidently that they're not following their particular uh, food requirement because a lot of people preach about what you should eat but they don't look particularly healthy and they don't have a stack of energy and they're not performing at their best and they don't like what they see in the mirror and they're not getting the results that they want from that particular eating or exercise plan and I share those four things because I think and I, I, I'm always asking probably now begging if you have an opinion about an eating and exercise plan if you are strongly opinionated about what people should eat those four things, I think, we should all be able to demand from our eating plan and our exercise plan and or both. 
We should have a stack of energy all day, every day, wake up with it and, and go to sleep with it and sleep deep. We should all perform at our best or whatever we choose to do. We should all love what we see in the mirror and we should all be getting the results that we want from that eating and exercise plan. Would that be fair? If your eating and exercise plan is not giving you those four things, energy, performance, look good and get the results that you want, could that be a suggestion that that's not a very good plan? So what would be a good plan? And I don't want to sound sarcastic because food is such a controversial topic. But it's difficult for me not to be sarcastic because after 40 plus years being an exercise professional, I've seen them all come and go and come and go and come and go. Every diet that you think is really popular or new right now, sometime in the past 40 years, it was also new and fashionable. They just seem to do this. The big question here though is if they worked, if the diets worked, if the eating plans worked, if the nutritional fanatical you have to do plans worked, then why do we have a world that is so overweight, that is so sick and diseased, that is so lacking in energy? Uh, I don't want that for our kids. I always, I'm always, again begging. I don't want our kids to think that it's normal to be have no energy, be out of shape and be sick and diseased. I don't want that for our kids. So what kind of information should we be taking on board about food? What kind of information are we giving about food? Is there a foolproof plan? And how do we work it out for ourselves rather than being told what to do? And I think that that's a far, there's far too many questions there and that's all far too controversial. But I do have two questions that make everything really simple. Uh, why would I do that and how does it work? Not why would somebody else do that and they tell you how it works or they did it and it worked for them. But a very personal question, why would I do that and how does it actually work? And I'm, again, I'm in the kitchen and I don't cook. I'm about to talk a little bit about science and I didn't like science at school. But I do love biology and I do love the human body. And here's some of the things that I think we have the right to ask questions about. As an exercise professional, I ask these questions of endocrinologists, exercise physiologists, doctors of dietetics. And if you are a consumer of food, most of us are, uh, would it be a good idea to have a better understanding about what is what food is and what it's made of? And I always now ask four very simple questions, or well, there's four very simple concepts that I think as exercise professionals we need to understand. So just tick them off in your brain. Whether you're a parent, a teacher, a coach, you're an exercise professional, maybe if you are a nutritionist or a dietitian or a doctor and you have forgotten this stuff, there's four macronutrients. The body needs nutrition to stay alive. If we don't get nutrients, we die. So obviously waters that will we'll start with oxygen. If you don't breathe, you're going to die within a few minutes if you can hold your breath for that long. If we don't have water, we might stay alive for a couple of days, not much longer than that. If we dehydrate, we die. We can survive for about, depending on which expert you listen to, between 30 to 60 days without any food and then we die. Uh, so obviously some of those things are very important. We need oxygen, we need water, and we need nutrients. And the nutrients come in two separate uh, packages. There's macronutrients and micronutrients, the stuff that keeps us alive and the stuff that makes it really cool to be alive because you have a stack of energy, you can perform at your best, you look good, and you're getting the results that you want. So the macronutrition, it keeps you alive. But if you want to have quality of life, if you want to feel good, look good, have a stack of energy, you have to have good micronutrition. So what's the difference? And these are the questions that I always ask. What are the four macronutrients? Where do they come from? What does the body do with them when we put them inside the body? When they're there, how do we store them and how do we burn them up? How does the body use them for energy? And if we get too much of them, what happens? And if we don't have enough of them, what happens? And if you can't answer those questions, I'm probably going to give you a really big challenge. Would it be a good idea to not give information about food if they are the four things that keep us alive and you can't answer those questions? Would it be a good idea perhaps to go and study what are the macronutrients, where do they come from, what does the body do with them, how does the body burn them up, use them for energy and what happens if we get too much of them and how do, how do we burn them up if we've stored them. 
Micronutrition, again, very interesting because it's uh, not, there's not too much controversy about micronutrition or macronutrition for that matter. Nobody argues that there's four macronutrients. And nobody argues that we need vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals and fiber and water and oxygen. There's no argument about that. But how they work inside the body and how much do we need of each one of them. Again, if you're giving information about food, should you know about them? So it's another simple question. We talk about vitamins and minerals. And often exercise people in particular will talk about you should take supplements or you should take a multivitamin or you should take this particular vitamin because you could be lacking in this. Well, the challenge with that, of course, is if you're not blood testing people, you wouldn't know whether they're lacking in a vitamin or a mineral or not. But the danger part of that, and I'm sure as an exercise professional, you don't want to hurt anybody, uh, if you give somebody a, a supplementation recommendation, for example, the fat-soluble vitamins, we don't pee them out because they're fat-soluble. Your body can hold them and store them. If you have too many of A, D, E, and K, that becomes toxic and you could get really sick and or you could die. So if you're recommending vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, fiber, supplementation, nutrition powders, anything to do with what people put inside their body, would it be a really good idea to understand what they actually are and what they do? Because you could kill someone, and I'll put it, that's as, as blank as I can put it. How would you feel if your recommendation for food made somebody sick or they were allergic to it or they vomited or they got really sick and ended up in hospital or worse, they die? And I'm sharing that with you very dramatically, it's my dramatic voice, because every single day I have to deal with exercise people who don't even know what the four macronutrients are, let alone anything about micronutrition, and they're sending out diets and eating plans to people who they don't even know. Uh, and I always use this example, sometimes, well, right now, you could go to the internet buy a nutrition plan, literally put your credit card into the website, buy a nutrition plan, and if your name was Chris, the person who sold you that eating plan probably won't even know whether you're a male or a female. And could that be a great place to start? They won't know how tall you are, how much muscle you've got, how much fat you've got, how fast your metabolism is, what your respiratory quotient is, what your base metabolic rate is. Could they be important things when it comes to energy and nutrition? So if I wrap all of that up, here's probably a great plan. You ready? Why not learn it for yourself? Why not learn? As an exercise professional, you should, yeah? With that, and I hate that word because we should all over ourselves. But as an exercise professional, would it be a really good idea if you ever want to give information about food that you learn more about it? The next part then is the, uh, the questions that we have the right to ask. So if you go to a nutrition course or if you go to a... Uh, you do something on nutrition when it comes to education, why not ask those two simple questions? Why would I do that and how does it work? And, and I'll just give you a real fun example. Back to my science. Uh, carbohydrate is made of carbohydrate, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Carbohydrate, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Do you know what fat's made of? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. They're the same thing. If you heard that, wouldn't you put your hand up and say, or ask the question, or type the question, excuse me, what's the difference between fat and carbohydrate? They're both made from the same thing. Now, the really interesting thing there, if you understand your macronutrition, carbohydrate has four and a half calories per gram, so the energy that it provides you with is four and a half calories per gram. Fat gives you nine calories per gram. It gives you twice as much energy, but it's made from the same stuff. So wouldn't that be a great question to ask? Why, is, why does fat have more calories? Why does it give me more energy? And then here's a really great question. And I'm very careful about asking these questions because most people can't answer them. If fat has twice as many calories as carbohydrate, why is carbohydrate fattening? And, or a better question, why is carbohydrate more fattening than fat? It's got t half the calories, fat's got twice as many calories, and yet people say, don't eat carbohydrate, it's bad for you. Well, here's another great question. What does the brain run on? What do muscles run on? What's stored in the liver? When you eat the macronutrient of carbohydrate, where does it go? Is it possible that it turns into glucose and glycogen? Glucose runs your brain, glycogen goes to your, your liver and your muscles. And when you exercise at high intensity, your body uses glycogen. Your muscles only run on glyco glycogen when you're exercising at high intensity. 
And when you are living your life in your aerobic system, you are using a combination of aerobic system, meaning you're breathing in oxygen and breathing out carbon dioxide, and your body's using a combination of fat, carbohydrate, and a little bit of protein. Should we know that, that's, that's exercise physiology, that's not nutrition. And if we don't know that, should we be, or somebody's telling us that carbohydrate's fattening or you shouldn't eat, or here's a really good one, this another really interesting one. Uh, don't eat any carbohydrate because your body will run on ketones. Well, would it be a really good question, number one, to ask what is a ketone? How does it work? What is the ketosis system? How does that work inside the body? Why does the body even have a ketone ketosis system? And here's a great argument that nobody's going to have with you. It is not the primary energy source for the brain or the muscles. If you are about to die, if you haven't eaten for a long time, if you're out in the desert and your, your body has had no food, your body will go into survival mode and it will do whatever it possibly can to keep you alive. So it'll take protein and calcium and, and all of the nutrients in your bones and it'll start eating your own bones and your own muscle and all the fat will be gone and it'll go into ketosis to keep you alive. Does it sound like an efficient energy system? And all I'm asking is, Find out for yourself. Before somebody says you should be on the ketone diet or you should be in ketosis because you could burn a lot of fat, yes, if I go out in the Sahara Desert or I'm lost in the bush and I haven't got any food, I will lose a lot of fat. There's absolutely no doubt about that. My body will burn fat and muscle and my bones and until the very minute that I die, I'll be trying to burn up my body to keep me alive. That's called, I don't want to live like that. I want to live with quality of life and have those four things. A stack of energy, work at my best, perform at my best, look great in the mirror and get the results that I want from my eating and exercise plan. So what I'm asking, begging again, as an exercise professional, there's so many people who give information about food without knowing any of those simple com concepts that I've asked. What is macronutrition? What is micronutrition? What are the en what's the energy timeline? What does the body use in the phosphate system? What does it use in the lactate system? What does it use in the aerobic system? How much and what for? If I want to burn fat off my body, how does my body actually do that? Here's a great question. When you lose 4, 5, 10 kilos of fat, where does it go? What happens to it? Do you vomit it? Do you poo it? Where does it go? It's a really interesting question and it's basic science. And what I'm asking you to do, because you could get caught up in all the complicated uh, calories aren't calories and some calories are different to other calories. Well, there's an interesting question. If this is a meter of distance, whether it's a meter of distance at my kitchen bench or a meter of distance in my garden or a meter of distance on a running track, does that change, that meter? It might be a meter of soft sand. It might be a meter of rubber. It might be a meter of spaghetti. But it's just a meter. And that's the interesting thing with calories. It's just a measurement unit of energy. So when people say not all calories are the same, that's like saying, well, not all one meters are the same or not all kilograms are the same or not all distance or measurement are the same. Just ask the question, explain that to me. Why aren't all calories the same if somebody says that to you? So then if I'm going to put calories into my body, what does my body do with them? And if, if I take in too many, because there's another really interesting concept, people will say to you, it's not energy in versus energy out. That's almost like saying gravity doesn't exist. And I'll ask the very simple question. If I burn up a thousand calories and I put in 2000 calories of energy, what will happen to my body? Is it possible that I might get fat or I'm going to put on weight? I'm going to be consuming more than I burn. If I burn 2000 and I only eat 1000, I've now got 1000 calorie deficit. What will happen over a period of time? If I'm out in the bush and I'm trying to save my life and I'm walking, 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 burning calories, burning calories, burning calories, and I'm not putting any in, what will happen to my body? And they're the questions, and I used to get in trouble at school for this because I went to a religious school and I used to ask questions like that. How does that work? And why do we, why did we do that? And when you're in a religious school, that gets you into trouble a lot because there's a lot of things about religion and the Bible that there's a lot of questions to ask. Well, I wasn't allowed to ask questions because you just had to have faith. When it comes to your human body, I don't think you should just have faith in somebody that tells you carbohydrate makes you fat or you have to drink two litres of water every day or alcohol's bad for you. You'd have to ask why. Why is it two litres? Why is it not three litres? 
why is it not one liter? What if I'm a bigger person or a smaller person? What if I live in a hot, sweaty place? Shouldn't I drink more water? What if I've got long, clear, clear weeds versus stinky tinkles? Does it make a difference? Why would we just say drink two liters? Why wouldn't we ask, why is it two liters? If somebody says alcohol makes you fat, you have to ask the question, how does it do that? And I'm not saying it does or it doesn't. I'm asking you to know how. This stuff is a toxin and your body has no storage space for it. If when you drink alcohol, your body can't store it anywhere because it's got to get rid of it. So how can it make you fat? It can't turn into fat because you don't even store it. However, is it possible that this has something to do with weight gain or weight loss? And if it does, should you know? If your body's preferring to burn alcohol because it's a toxin, it's also a macronutrient, it's one of those four macronutrients, if your body's burning this, what isn't getting burnt? If your body's preferring to use this as an energy source, what's happening to the fat, protein and carbohydrate that you might have eaten or you currently have inside your body? Could they be really good questions to ask? And every time you ask a question, this is a beautiful thing that k Man said just recently and it just it blows my mind because he's such a smart guy. Science isn't exact. There's about half a dozen things in science that are the absolute fact and nobody's argued them. Not that we know, by the way, because you can't see gravity. We just know that every time you drop something, it goes to the ground. So we've, they say that's a, a law of science. Gravity is a law of science. There's very few of those. The, after that, science should be about this. This is so exciting. You ready? For every scientific question or, or answer, there should be another 1,000 questions because everything that happens, if I say to you, uh, let's pick one, that you have atoms in your body. Have you ever seen one? What about even you've got bones in your body? Have you ever seen one? I haven't. Oh, it's this, that's I've actually told you a lie because when you see somebody breaks their skin, you can actually see the bone inside. So you can say, yes, I've seen a bone. Are there people that study the human body and cut it open and have a look? Yes. But there's a lot of things that I, I can't explain and I'm not even going to try and explain them. But if somebody's preaching at you and telling you what to do with your body, do you have the right to say, excuse me, professor, excuse me, doctor, excuse me, social media expert, could you please explain to me why that happens and how it works? Why I would do that and how does it work? Why does carbohydrate make me fat when it's only got half the calories of fat? How does that work? Please explain. So as an exercise professional, as a parent, a teacher, and a coach, I want to flip all of that on its end. I don't care about food and exercise. It's irrelevant because there's so much argument about it. Here's what I care about. I would love you and everybody that you care about, because this is what I want for everybody that I care about and what I want for me, is a stack of energy, perform at my best, Look great in the mirror if that's important to you and get the results that you want from your eating and exercise plan. If you have got all of those happening, congratulations. Whatever you're doing, it's working. Keep doing it and don't let anybody tell you not to do it. And I'll say it again. You've got a stack of energy all day, every day. You perform at your best at everything that you do. You love what you see in the mirror and you're getting the results that you want from your eating and exercise plan. Awesome. If not and you want to get advice or help or support or more knowledge, could it be a really good idea to understand how your body works, not listen to some social media guru tell you what you should and shouldn't eat? I think that's a really important question. What's going to work for you? Yummy, yummy, yummy. I want food in my tummy because I love food and I love to exercise. I love my life. Woohoo!